This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Chisetta Alexander. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am doing absolutely fabulous. I am excited to be here chatting with you tonight. Well, it's a great pleasure. Now, I'm not sure, but there seems to be just a bit of an accent of a Caribbean person somewhere in there. I'm not sure if it's because you mix with Caribbean people a lot, but am I accurate about that? No. No I don't Caribbean? think so. I live All in right. the I live in the south. Uh, it's probably um, the southern accent. <laughs> yeah, it's probably yeah. The I live in the accent. south, so mm. I I have I work very hard tr- to try not to have the southern drawl. All right. Well, that would definitely put you in the Caribbean space when you do that. What part of the south are you in? I'm in Florida. I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. Oh well, yeah, you capital, definitely yes. get the mix of everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that, uh, that explains it. All right. All right. Well, do tell me, which of your talents, Chisetta, is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? Well, I am a faith-based business coach, and my coach tagged me in your post. Hmm. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> very good thing. She's been encouraging us to get out and be more visible. And so I immediately... Are. Um, connected. That's wonderful. Well, I'm glad that you did come through and to have a conversation with me. Uh, that's a great idea. What's your coach's name? Her name is Dr. Tracy Timberlake. All right, all right. Most definitely a wonderful individual. All right. Well, please, I mean, expand uh, what you do as a faith based coach, please. Um, so, really, my focus is helping women of faith. T- tap into their kingdom purpose and then monetize it to create the prosperity that God really has for them. And so um, I do a lot of deep dive exercises with them to get them to really clarify what it is that they feel called to do. And then some brainstorming activities to get them to connect it to different ways to monetize that. Mm -hmm. And then try and encourage them to get out there in the marketplace and go after it. Where have you seen uh, an individual usually have more of a challenge? Is it more based on the, them understanding the purpose or their passion, or is it from the going out there to get it part? Um, so it's mainly, it's kind of a combination of two things. So one, it's going to be there's a lack of clarity around what their calling is. Really and truly, every single person knows what they're called to do. It just kind of gets buried by life. Mm. And so once they've unearthed that, then it becomes, am I, can I really do this thing? Am I really capable? Am I really worthy of this grand vision that I see for my life? Now, where's the best place for someone that's listening to us, Josetta, to connect with you to get that type of clarification? Well, the best place for them to go would be to my website. I have a got a free guide that is available called the Pinpoint Your Purpose Guide, and that can be downloaded at trasettaalexander.com forward slash pinpoint. And they can download the guide and it walks them through a few questions and then the brainstorming exercise and then there's a little information in there for them to connect with me for a free 30 minute strategy session to figure out what the next steps are for them to actually go out and pursue it yeah that sounds like fun now are your sessions fun well i try to make them fun um <laughs> I, one thing i, I really want to connect with people um, because when you're talking about what it is that you're called to do, it's a very personal thing. And a lot of times, the majority of my clients, they've been sitting on their idea of what or what they feel they're called to do for at least 10 years. Mm-hmm. And they're ready to dust, take it off the shelf and dust it off and do something with it. And they need a little encouragement, a little coaxing. And, a, and so I try to be that um, friend, auntie encourage your mentor to really help draw them out and really the power 
and confidence that's on the inside of them. Mm, that's wonderful. Well, do tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please, Trisetta. Well, the one thing that I consistently do is personal development. I am constantly investing in myself. Read, attend workshops, um, watch videos online. I'm constantly doing something to increase my own personal learning. I'm so sorry about that. I think like the U.S., That's certain okay. parts of the U.S. is having challenges with the internet. Because uh, I was just in Pennsylvania virtually and it was working pretty well. Uh, we can continue right where we were going. So I'll still ask you, how does it make you feel? And we'll continue from there. All right. Okay. How does it make you feel, Trisetta? Um, It makes me feel really good. It, one of the things that I'm, I'm really a big proponent of um, having a growth mindset. And the only way that you can grow as a human being is to stretch yourself. And that comes from exposing yourself to concepts and ideas that you may be unfamiliar with or may even make you a little uncomfortable. Um, but by reading is my biggest thing that I do um, to develop myself personally. And I've learned so much. And I try to take at least one thing, one concept from every book that I read and implement it. Because honestly, you're not going to implement everything from every book that you read. So if you can just have one thing that you can take away and implement into your life, um, it, within a very short period of time, you can start seeing some radical shifts in the way that you're on um, the way that you live your life and what you get out of life itself. What's one of the books you've read lately, please? I am currently reading The Big Leap. Oh my gosh, that book is amazing. How far are you yeah. in? Um, I'm about halfway. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm that about book halfway. Is amazing. Uh, Guy Hendricks, right? Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, and I'm, I'm noticing it's funny because I'm really paying attention to um, what goes on when in me when different challenges show up. And it's like, oh, am I having an upper limit problem? Mm, yeah. Okay. Recognizing you know, what can I do to move beyond this? And yeah. Um, it, it's a it's a huge mindset shift. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, that book represented a huge turning point in my life. Uh, somewhere around uh, 2015, I think. Yeah, when I was introduced to that book. It's really an amazing book. I'm glad that you're getting into that. I'm glad I asked that question as well. Yeah. Definitely. All right, my friend. It's funny because, Go ahead, it's funny because I... I was just going to say, it's funny because I've had several people mention it to me over the last couple of years. And I finally was like, okay, I'm going to read this book because too many people are recommending it. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, that book, I've, I, I probably listened to that book. I had uh, probably, uh, I always pull it back. So it's, I probably listen to it like two to three times a year. It's that good, amazing audience. It's really, really great content. Uh, Self-sabotaging yeah. is something yeah. yeah that comes in there that's wonderful all right my friend well let's switch gears for a moment let me now invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful warm blue caribbean water Trisa, so what is your earliest <laughs> childhood memory um the <laughs> it's funny the first thing that i can remember is i think i was like three and it was Christmas morning and I was, I had gotten a little kitchenette set and my parents were sitting on the couch and I was just playing with the little, my little kitchenette cooking, I assume breakfast cause it would have been morning. <laughs> so cooking pretend breakfast on Christmas morning on my little kitchenette. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Um, probably because I actually was, I was adopted and that was the day that they, the moment that they chose to um, inform me that I was adopted. And of course, at three years old, I didn't really understand what that meant. I was just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, and, you know, kept on playing. But, you know, later on, as I got older, 
then of course I came to understand that. So I'm sure that that's why it's so imprinted on my brain. That's intriguing. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm glad that they told me at that age because I, it, it wasn't kind of a big shot. So I, I knew all the time growing up. Um, and so the fact that I'm adopted leaves a lot of questions because I don't know, you know, I don't know my birth parents. Um, but I choose, I've kind of written my own story and I choose to believe that um, it was because I was so loved that my parents knew that they couldn't care for me. So they put me in the care of someone who could. Hmm. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? To that sure. Memory? I love the idea that you are helping other individuals follow through with their passion in spite of what their past has been. And to see you as a child being there cooking and uh, doing what you were doing, which is preparing for others and being told uh, what is the truth which is necessary, uh, but definitely not stopping, but continuing to do uh, the preparation that is necessary for others. I love how that has embodied itself into who you are today by doing the same thing, uh, helping them identify their truths and then going forth yeah, to do what's necessary within business, to take action uh, with their lives. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> it is powerful. That's powerful. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? That has to be New Edition, Cool It Now. Yeah, <laughs> cool it. it Now. I yeah, loved I that song. Yeah. I was a huge New Edition fan. In fact, that was the very first concert I ever went to was to go see New Edition. Sweet. All right, my friend. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Trisetta? I am ready. Trisetta, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Have I chosen someone? Yeah. Hit me yes or no. Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, it's got to be more than eight. I'm always on the computer. Trisha, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Trisha Alexander, what would you say that is? I would say my personal motto, which is live on purpose, pursue your passion, and unleash your power. Mm, that's very powerful. It's just like that little girl, right? Sitting there. Yeah. Love it, love <laughs> yes. It. Well, Chisetta, again, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, really just, I guess where I would leave it is um, with my family motto, which says, uh, my mom always told us, hey, so you can do what you want to do tomorrow. Hmm. Could you say that again, please? You cut out just at the beginning of that. Say that again, please. Do what you have to do today so you can do what you want to do tomorrow. Hmm. And there we go. Trishata Alexander, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convoys with Angel Jones. Thank you very much, Angel, for having me. You're welcome. A pleasure, our treasure. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.